Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So recently it was disclosed that Bill O'Reilly had settled some sexual harassment claims for a total of $13 million. These claims involve five women who alleged that he has harassed them and all that kind of stuff. And now there's another woman who is making similar allegations, a woman by the name of Wendy Welsh. She, um, I don't know if she's actually filed the suit yet, but I know that she had a press conference with her attorney talking about the allegations. And basically she said that Bill O'Reilly uh, arranged a meeting with her. They had lunch or dinner. And after that meeting, Bill O'Reilly propositioned her. But before he propositioned her, he talked about how he would make her a paid contributor and all this and that to his program. And then he propositioned her to come to his hotel room. She rejected his advances. And then after that, he began to retaliate against her uh, by reneging on the deal and by being cold towards her and all that kind of stuff. So she now has a sexual harassment claim against this man. So now, you know, he's losing these advertisers and all that kind of stuff. And... Donald Trump has decided to defend Bill O'Reilly. He said that Bill O'Reilly is a good guy and all that kind of stuff. He said that um, Bill O'Reilly shouldn't have settled his lawsuits. And this really isn't surprising. You know, it's not surprising that somebody like Donald Trump would defend Bill O'Reilly for obvious reasons. First of all, they're both racist. Second of all, they both have been accused of sexual harassment. Donald Trump is a man that was caught on tape bragging about sexually assaulting women, bragging about, quote unquote, grabbing them, you know, by their um, genitalia. So it's no surprise that somebody like him would defend a Bill O'Reilly. Now, I'm glad that these advertisers have pulled out from Bill O'Reilly's show. But my question is, what took them so long? I mean, this man has done things um, that warranted them withdrawing from his show a long time ago. This man has made all kinds of racist statements. And I'm going to take a couple of quotes from Media Matters. This man referred to African-Americans as ill-educated and having tattoos on their foreheads. This man expressed surprise that a Harlem restaurant was like any other restaurant. It's like he expected it to be far worse than any other restaurant simply because it was located in a black community, simply because it was a black restaurant. This man has complained about the left wanting to take away power from the white establishment. This man has attacked Black Lives Matter. He has blamed them for the rise of fascism on college campuses. This man actually had the nerve to talk about how the slaves who built the White House were well fed and had decent lodging. This is a man who recently attacked Maxine Waters, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, by saying he didn't listen to a word that she was saying about Donald Trump. He was focused on her James Brown wig. This is a man with a long history of racism, a long history of sexism, but yet the advertisers continued to have their ads running on his program. They had no problem associating their brands with this racist man, with this sexist man, with this damn bigot. And all of a sudden they had a change of heart because of these recent allegations. I mean, it's late. I'm glad that they did finally act, but they should have acted a long time ago. They really should have. And I think that this whole situation involving Bill O'Reilly is another example of the hypocrisy of these right wing conservatives who want to preach to you and me about family values, why they violate family values why they do things that are contrary to family values. How is sexually harassing women consistent with family values? And I'm sure that at one point he was married while some of this stuff was probably going on. And from what I recall, this man has been accused of sexually, I mean, of abusing his wife, not sexually abusing her, but physically abusing her, if I'm not mistaken. 
I will include links to all my sources as usual in the description box so that you can read this information for yourself. But yeah, I just think it's another example of hypocrisy. And the very last thing that I'll say is this, you know, really this should be a cautionary tale for anybody that is on the workplace. You know, you should learn from this horrible example in Bill O'Reilly. You know, often people will let their lower head do the thinking for them. They will let their lower head cause them to lose everything, to lose their job, to lose their money, to even lose their lives. You know, so I, I just think that this is a prime example of how people should not let their body and their sexual urges control them and to control their lives. And, you know, this is the example of somebody allowing that to happen, allowing their life to be messed up because of their inability to control their sexual urges and desires. So, you know, when it comes to the workplace, you know, I just have a, a general rule. You know, I don't date anybody that I work with. I don't flirt with people that I work with. And I encourage people to follow that same model. I mean, I know that a lot of people have met, you know, some people have met their future wives and husbands in the workplace, but I just don't mix business with pleasure. You know, I don't mix, um, you know, dating and all that kind of stuff with the workplace because it adds complications to the workplace. You know, harmless flirting can end up having you in a situation where somebody is accusing you of sexual harassment. So it's better to not even engage in that kind of activity at the workplace. Your workplace is not the club. It's not some internet dating site or anything like that. It's a place of business and people need to treat the workplace as a place of business. And that's something that Bill O'Reilly apparently didn't understand because apparently at Fox News, they have a um, an environment that tolerates this kind of sexual harassment. I mean, one of the owners, I think his name is Roger Ells, you know, he's been accused of sexual harassment. So apparently this was acceptable in that environment. You know, apparently it was acceptable. I mean, how else can you explain Fox News continuing to keep Bill O'Reilly in that key spot despite five women accusing him of sexual harassment? How else can you explain that? And the fact that they would pay out and that he would pay out $13 million to settle these claims says something about the merits of those claims. You don't settle claims for that kind of money when there is no merit to the claims. And before I go, I just want to bring home that point about the hypocrisy of these advertisers who are withdrawing from the Bill O'Reilly show. I mean, they waited, you know, for a long time. They continue to associate their brands with this bigot and racist. They didn't pull out their ads when black workers at Fox brought a lawsuit against Fox News for um, race discrimination. But now they finally pulled out their ads when some white women accused one of the key hosts on that program of sexual harassment. Again, I'm glad that they did it, but I just think that they need to be consistent. If they really want to um, promote positive values, if they want to have um, a, a good brand, they need to stand up against all forms of bigotry. They need to stand up against sexism and racism and not just cherry pick when they're going to withdraw from certain programs. So those are my thoughts. Tell me what you think. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.